Okay, um, this was a little failed introduction and it relates to a part of uh, my presentation and you'll see afterwards. So I used this uh, robot in one of my demos. Um, okay, so... Proof of wonder. But first, uh, who am I? So, I initially graduated from medical school, um, but I was unsatisfied with the tools that I saw in my medical field and also with uh, the closed uh, data and uh, some other issues. But I started building um, medical software tools, imaging tools actually, during my university years. And then I started uh, full-time web development exactly the second day after I graduated. But at some point I was unsatisfied with web development and I looked for other things. And I, find, I found uh, machine learning and AI and I tried it out. The course built my own uh, tools for making uh, it easier to build models. But I didn't like the space that much, also because of uh, yeah, the monopoly on data, and um, it, was a, it wasn't that open as I would have wanted. But then I um, found about blockchain and Ethereum, and I was um, really drawn by the concepts of transparency, immutability, and decentralization. They were very in line with what I wanted to do and B. So I've been building in the Ethereum space for two years. And uh, I started by helping uh, BrainBot with their micro Raiden and Raiden network ch uh, payment channels, so unidirectional and bidirectional payment channels, working mostly on the smart contracts. And also, uh, I really liked working on the protocol specs and building demos on them. Um, and then I started my own projects. One of them is Pipeline. And you'll also see some demos of Pipeline today and you will see why. So Pipeline started as a visual ID for building a Solidity smart contract by dragging and dropping. And it evolved uh, to being able to build uh, mini decentralized apps um, also by dragging and dropping. So for MicroRaiden, for example, I did a demo at DevCon 3 with, with a robot car. So it was the first live uh, robotic car demo with Ethereum payment channels. Uh, then I also did a demo with a flying uh, drone and taking pictures. And then uh, paying robots for live stream tricks. So the robot that you saw on the stage was actually a live stream with a friend of his, Yoda. And um, the game was a rock, paper, scissors game. I'll show you a couple of things about this later on. And now I actually want to do a first presentation with no physical claps. So if... Uh, you would try to try this uh, with me. If you go to this link or QR code, I'll keep it a bit on the screen. Then you can um, press a clap button and we'll see live uh, on a graph how many claps uh, my presentation had because we are talking about a, about a proof of wonder. So I actually want to know if I do a good presentation or not. And what happens is, so the app should look like this. And if you, see the, if you don't see this, please raise a hand. Okay. And I'll keep it a little bit visible so, we, so I see what you guys are doing. Um, so what I, what I did is I have a server cache for the votes, but the votes are also, um, you also have Raiden payments, 
between two nodes, which of course are mine because I couldn't um, ask all of you to install Raiden now for this. And at the end, you can settle the channel, and the results of, um, of the claps remain on-chain at settle time. And OK, so we get a little bit of real-time feedback with the cache. And I'll tell you more about this later. So why am I so drawn to demos? My personal reason is that I really like to get feedback uh, from what I work. So this is what actually attracted me to uh, software and to building. Uh, but also, prototyping, if you do prototyping while building a product, so especially in this space where you have a lot of protocol layers, you open up the path for more applied dialogue on the product. So you can see where the holes are, you can talk to people, they can see what you're actually building, and you can, they can see at what stage your product is. And also, it can inspire people. So you incentivize people to build on top of your product if they see something that they really, really like. And also keeps devel the development team's morale high, because they see stuff built uh, on top of their project and gives a chance to think a bit about integration with other projects. And this is always nice in our, in our space. And uh, yeah, important demos define new concepts. So if you uh, leave from a demo with something new that you've learned, especially a new concept, then that demo was pretty great. So, yeah, I, I do a lot of demos and I do YouTube videos of those demos. So a couple of my recent demos uh, to do a little bit of uh, an, exp an explanation, uh, an analysis of them. So with uh, Micro Raiden, yeah, I have a couple of, I'll post these uh, online on my Twitter. Um, and you can see some videos of what that was. And you can also see uh, the code used for that. So this was the robot car. Uh, this is something that uh, me and my partner built actually uh, from uh, from parts. Had a lot of trouble with it because of that. Um, this the the robot car was controlled by a road net flow. So I did the flow for um, going forward, going backwards, and so on. And the movements were paid by uh, with micro Raiden. So you would press the button, and then um, a, an off-chain payment would be done. Um, the drone demo, I, we just got a commercial micro drone. Um, and I tried to hack, the because it, it could connect through Wi-Fi. And I tried to um, connect with it in Python and um, build the micro Raiden payments um, on, on those HTTP requests that made the drone move and take pictures. So yeah, I used Wireshark to do some packet sniffing. And uh, I also have a YouTube video demo link. My recent one was Crypto Bot Wars. I know there's another project named Crypto Wars. Yeah, we were CryptoBot Wars. And um, I actually live streamed the robots. This was in my house, so I couldn't do that too much. Um, and you can, act, you can see a Medium art article explaining why I ended up building um, this demo. And just for a bit of fun, this was my setup. So I had uh, my laptop running the game. These were the two robots. And uh, this was the phone doing the live streaming. And yeah, we played a game. It was a rock, paper, scissors. And then at the end, the robots would uh, play out the moves. So I'm, there's no sound here, but they would say rock or paper, and then uh, they would be sad or happy. So in this case, Vader won. 
uh, a lot of issues, of course, with uh, latency and all, all of that thing. Uh, and um, yeah, this is not very visible, but this is kind of an overview of the components that uh, I had to build for doing that seemingly simple demo. So we had two servers for the robots. Um, we had a game guardian server that would have connection with uh, a guardian Raiden node. So people would have their own Raiden nodes installed and then uh, send payments to um, the game guardian Raiden node through the game guardian server. And then a game client, of course, that would show the game interface. Uh, yeah, this is a QR code for the meta video if uh, you're interested to see. And then, yeah, why, why do we need um, demos? And this is another, um, a second part related to my pipeline project, which helps with interoperability of products. So, um, Usually, there's a density of expertise in each product that's very high within the development team, which isn't shared by the rest of the users or developers that are using that product. And this is related to documentation, integration, and interoperability. So this is the product itself, and this is the high uh, density of knowledge of the development team. And then around it, you have all the people that are using the the product or developing on top of the product. And these people don't need to know exactly what's inside. Um, but what usually happens is that you have entanglement between components. And sometimes you cannot separate the components, for example, smart contracts with uh, the JavaScript or Python part. You cannot separate them and um, fragment the expertise. So it's a bit of an entanglement here also. So when this happens, you need to define um, interfaces that, go, that wrap these components all together. Because people usually don't have enough time to look at every, um, every protocol. And usually, they choose uh, the one that's, that means less hassle. Um, so what should we do in general? So we should lead by example and document by demo so that people n know your product. So what I've uh, started to build is pipeline. So we've defined uh, interfaces for products. And we use functional programming and combine um, functions and do a pipeline as a pipeline streamed of actions that the user wants to do. So the user will choose different services um, made by different teams and put them all together and build its own mini small agent. We have a cache of a, cent we have a centralized database that acts as a cache. And we're going forward to more distributed um, methods of storing. For example, we've uh, integrated ETHPM instead of having a centralized database of contracts. We also have a search. So in, in pipeline, you will have uh, contracts. You will have open API specifications for the projects. Open API is a, um, the most used standard for HTTP requests. Uh, computed aided visual integration. And type functional programming doctrine because we define the interfaces uh, with ty uh, typed inputs and outputs. And it's available today for Solidity, JavaScript, OpenAPI, GraphQL, and we have some other plans uh, in the future. And you can use it as a Remix plugin. So what, um, what you do as a user is you find products that you can use. Then you try to integrate the products as a part of, the new, of a new product, test it and run it in different scenarios, different chains, and then share the product on um, the database that can be centralized or 
um, decentralized ideally. So I can show you uh, pipeline a bit. I'm not sure how, okay. If you go to uh, Remix, um, the old pipeline is here, but this is something that I have hosted on my machine because it's a new version. We also have a uh, possibility to load contracts from ETHPM. And if we load contracts here, we can also export them to ETHPM. But we can use these contracts to, so these are different contracts, vendor registration, vendor prices, and marketplace. So we have chosen three functions from three different contracts. And this is very small for you to see. Um, but we have named and typed inputs and outputs. And what we can do is connect the outputs to other functions inputs. And these have to match. And what this does, I'm not going to continue all, all this. What this does is generate uh, um, Solidity code, which basically does batching of those functions. And also JavaScript code that calls those uh, functions successively. And we can set uh, the free inputs, those that have not been connected to um, that don't come from another function, you can, we can sub set them here and try to uh, run this. But what we also have I'll reload the frame a bit. We've also recently integrated, um, as I said, open API. So you can have um, a blockchain event, for example, and then use that to do, I don't know, uh, HTTP requests with the, uh, with the arguments that that blockchain event emitted. Unfortunately, I have a small bug here. But I can show you uh, here, for example. So this is the uh, API for, um, for this digital microscope. And we can see how we can control the position. So hopefully, we will see it move. Ah, it moved just a little bit. Ah. But what we can also do is use the Swarm API, so we remove this. We do a picture, and then 
send the details of that picture to uh, Swarm. This is the swarm hash. See if I have a swarm gateway here. And this is what it loaded. So you, this is too small. So this is the, uh, the name that I entered. So these are a couple of things that uh, Pipeline can do now. The idea started in June, and uh, we had our first prototype in July. From then, we had multiple refactorings, especially that we are now uh, following the specifications from ETHPM. Um, and yeah, we did our own graphical library for this. Um, so now you can have Solidity, JavaScript, OpenAPI, and you can control uh, robots and layer one with the Solidity, and layer two with uh, off-chain transactions and other uh, HTTP requests to um, Okay. So I did the demo. So what did I see today? Uh, yeah, a first scientific robot controlled by pipeline, a demo of a demo platform, and um, one thing that we have in mind for pipeline, for example, is to do the structuring of inputs and outputs. So if you have objects in those inputs and outputs, to be able to destructure them in multiple fields, so you can better uh, connect them in more detail with other inputs and outputs. And also, yeah, a half-baked shitty demo. Uh, this is something that I knew before coming on stage. Um, and what I can do next, uh, please name your return variables in Solidity, because we have documentation. Uh, this is something that I didn't show you. But here, when you add stuff, you get the not spec specification, so something that people usually don't do is not return their, uh, not name their return variables in Solidity. This would be something nice. And show some love to my, to your uh, natural um, language specification. And use ETHPM, so your contracts are also available to others to use and build on top of. And yeah, add my product to pipeline. So important for us is not necessarily the source code, are, but are the ABIs and open API specifications. Uh, what follows? Maybe someone wants to volunteer to do automatic, automated uh, image stitching for uh, the microscope, and maybe some other crypto plugins. Uh, you can contribute to Pipeline. And yeah, let us know about uh, your video demos, um, we would like to do a monthly best of if uh, there's a will. And don't be a stranger to the common goal. So if you're building something, think about other projects that would maybe want or need to use your product and uh, collaborate to have general specs to which we can uh, all contribute. Uh, so yeah, the microscope will remain available if uh, you want to try it out during the lunch break. And by the way, what you saw here are uh, bees' knees. Um, yeah. 
present your product by using working examples, get your product interfaces ready, and demo some integrations with other products. So that's it. Thank you. And please, please, use, the, please use the app. Otherwise, I'll go home and be sad. Thank you.